We're going to move past you. I'm so sorry. I thought we were done with Chris. So I have to put in my input. Okay, so um, author is, is uh, supposed to be one of the speakers uh, on, on this topic, for this topic, but uh, he has to leave. That's an urgent matter. So, um, all right, so uh, I'd like to in introduce uh, my wife. Uh, she came out of uh, the public school system in California, uh, where we now believe leads the country in having a really broken educational system now, in light of many recent recently publicized scandals. I'm sure you you heard about what happened over in California. Uh, she earned her BS in biology at UC Irvine and her uh, MD at the George Washington University. Uh, she is a um, uh, she also completed her residency training in internal medicine at GW. She is a medical officer at the Department of State, and uh, this afternoon she will talk about the FLE curriculum and its inappropriate contents. And Sybil uh, was about to uh, talk um, on that subject. We'll welcome you to um, uh, to, to, to add your comments or um, your opinions. Okay. Well, I think it's. Um uh, I actually didn't bring my uh, laptop to show the, uh, you know, there's a curriculum for different grades, but it starts yes, all the way yes. now to uh, kindergarten. Mm -hmm. And, um, and when well, initially, give me a point. It's actually better. Where do I go? So, you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. No. So, no. so, um. Don't work. Wait. Turn, turn on. It's on. Do it. Right here. It's on. Can you hear me now? That's better. That's better? Okay. So, um, initially, I think the, the lower grades have more family emphasis. But as you get into, get to the fifth grade, then it becomes explicit. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, I have to say, I, I'm one of the parents uh, in Fairfax County Public School, who were naive enough to trust the school system, to think that, you know, this day and age, I thought, well, you know, my husband and I, we're so busy, we didn't pay attention to what our kids were learning in school, especially when we have two bright kids. Um, and we thought that, you know, the school would know better. And so, one day my son came home, my son now is in uh, sixth grade, he's 11. But last year he came home, um, have, I knew about the, the FLE, but um, I thought, well, you know, since I'm in medicine, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, he's, they're learning biology. Okay, so it's good for them to learn this stuff now. And I didn't bother to look through the curriculum with him. Uh, so I, and it's a, an automatic program, so it's not like you're supposed to opt in. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to opt out if you don't want your kids to, to um, come into the system. You, who has... Uh, elementary school's children in this room. Okay, so you you know what I'm talking about, right? I mean, they, so you're aware that this is an opt-out program, not an opt-in. Right. Right? That means automatically, if you don't say anything, they're going to teach your kids. Right? You're in unless you're out. Unless, I'm sorry? You're in unless you're out. Oh, right. <laughs> so anyway, so one day my... So there is a gender part which is, there is no opt-out also, right? It's part of the curriculum. Now that's what I'm saying. This dental education is yeah. part of the curriculum. That you you don't have you an option to opt out. Right. Only the FLE has the opt out. There are two. Okay, so that's not part of. And there is something that is the move something from the FLE to gender education. There is there is a section that is not really we cannot opt out. It's part of the curriculum. Right. You don't even see this. Only only kids see it. Okay, I think. I think that part I'm not aware I don't know, I think it starts at 8th grade or 7th grade. Okay. So I'm, I'm not aware of that part. So, so Vincent's saying that there's a part of the FLE curriculum you cannot opt out. They mold things from FLE into gender. Oh. Okay. Which is by okay. default part of the curriculum. Okay. Gotcha. So, so there's, a, there's a section in FLE and that's about gender identity. It's older. That in, in the, that's to be taught in middle school level. That is not an option, that, that you have no choice 
ways of opting out. Okay, anyway, so my son came home and he was all rattled. He was all rattled. And um, that was last year. And, and I realized that I, I was start asking questions. Um, what's going on? And he told me, well, he's learning about, you know, uh, the specifics, the biology parts for boys. And the girls are learning their, the, but the biology parts for girls. But then they're going to come up next to sexual intercourse. And I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> you know, I didn't realize this. And so I went into the curriculum and I said, Look, this is too inappropriate. This is the stuff that I was learning in medical school. You know, so, um, so anyway, so I got in touch with the school and, 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 and opted him out at that point. And then since then I opted him out uh, for this year also. So this is something the parents have to be aware. And there is a organization called the uh, Fairfax County Oh, I'm sorry. It's the parents and educator, the concerned parents and educators of Fairfax County, mm -hmm. who are behind this movement of trying to get FLE off the curriculum, but they have not been successful. And apparently, there was a a, a polling, a poll of parents back in 2015. Ninety percent of parents objected to FLE in the curriculum, yeah. but the school board went ahead and voted. They're, they're, they're defiant. Right, they, they, they voted to keep the curriculum yeah. and to make it as an opt-out instead of opt-in, meaning opting in, you're all aware, right? Opting in means it's something that if you choose to have your child be taught the subject, then uh, you sign them up for that. But if not, then your child doesn't get that, that course. But anyway, so, so there's that movement, you know, and so I hope that the next coming school board, um, this is to be addressed, that we should think about, you know, getting rid of the FLE. I mean, I, there's certain parts of the FLE, FLE uh, that might be helpful with the, the family part, but the uh, biology part, you know, learning about um, the, um, the biological basis, you know, for... Um, biological basis of sex. I mean, that is something they can learn later on, like in ninth grade. Uh, that's what I learned. But I, I think their parents who may think middle school would be where they learn, like in health. But in terms of sexual intercourse, I think that's way too, that's, that's not appropriate. You know, so, um, okay, so that's something to, to discuss about. Uh, and in terms of the, the, um, the transgender part. I, I think, you know, kids are learning the basic biology right now. I mean, they they have no idea, you know, what that, that is all about. And so if we would throw in all these terms like transgender, um, you know, the uh, gender identity and the sex assigned or, or gender assigned at birth. I mean, gender, from what I've learned, gender means is the role of um, a role one takes in society. It's not sex. Sex means male or female. Gender is more a role. So, you know, when we bring in this term of gender, it's very confusing. And, but now it's becoming a household term in terms, you know, when you hear this in media, you hear about gender identity. I mean, you know, it means you identify yourself as either a male or female, or neither, you know, the LGBTQ, um, EDFG. Movement. <laughs> so, so anyway, so I think that 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 part should be should be taken out. I mean, it's the, the kids are already they're learning the basic stuff right now. We need to you know get them back to basics. They're not you know not putting in all these questionable, ambiguous uh, ideological terms. And I think it's just make that makes them more confused and not helpful. So, um, I have a question yeah. uh, regarding FLE content um, uh, at a, a high level where they are encouraging the use of unproven drug uh, to prevent uh, HIV. Right. You want to talk about that? So, so yes, there's a, so as part of the, um, part of the sex education, they also talk about contraception and, and so they mentioned about this HIV um, prophylaxis prophylactic regimen is called 
uh, Truvada, which is a combination of three drugs. And it's actually for um, uh, it's actually for folks who are um, um, you know same sex. Um, it's more for males who have sex with males. Uh, it started out from that community, and um, or now it's transgender you know communities that use that too. Um, it it has a very high preventive rate against HIV. However, there are failure cases that have been documented. They go. And we're talking about in the, um, in the digits. We're talking about like six, seven so far. I mean, this has been um, a, a regimen that they've been looking, that they've been using for the last few years. However, the school board, I believe, uh, part of the FLE curriculum mentioned that this is a an option for contraception. And we're talking about kids. You know, there's no FDA approval for for um, Truvada to be used in. in in children, and I don't think this is. Uh, they reduced the age recently from 13 to 12. The age that this can be used uh -huh. to satisfy. Is the, that what they wrote in the in the um, in the FLA? Okay, so this is like a, a preventive medicine. Yeah. To, right. You know, for right. same sex exactly. men. Right. And as far as you're teaching, that is okay to children in the ninth grade. Right. Then you should actually teach them how to prevent disease. Also, that's when the the medicine came. In. Exactly. So, but I, it's not proven in children. I mean, I, I don't think the school board should take a position uh, to have this included in FLE. I mean, FLE shouldn't be included in the first place, as we're talking about. But but to even mention that is inappropriate <coughs> and it's dangerous. I can see you're struggling with the, the obscenity part of it. You know, being in front of the audience then. So there, is a, there is an opportunity law in Virginia uh -huh. state right. that there are certain uh, uh, content uh, come under the obscenity law and whatever we are teaching comes under that. Mm -hmm. But there is an exception for universities and colleges and educational institutions. Huh. So using that exception they can teach this. So there is an initiative to take schools the K-12 schools out of that educational institution so that this becomes obscene. That means you cannot use it to, to go legally. And, and um, as far as the, the state requirement, that is, there is a mandate in many states that there is certain family life education has to be there. And pretty much, you know, that is when my kids were growing up, that's what it was there. I read through the curriculum and I approved it. But in that recent past, they went above and beyond the Virginia state law, so that Fairfax can be a role model for other counties, because Fairfax is the number one county. And that can be challenged using the uh, you know, opt-in, opt-out, because the regular FLE, it's mandated to be there, so only opt-out is possible, according to Virginia state law, what we used to have. But whatever came in new, that is not state mandated, so that can be challenged. Yeah. These are like some initiatives right. going on. Right. How to legally, you know, get it out of the system? That sounds good. <laughs> but you know, it goes back to Chris's point about you know teaching the ambiguity, you know, to, to children and get them all confused. And it's one of the ways that yes, we're being um, we're being infiltrated by the, mm -hmm. the communist the communistic ideology. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anybody else with any question? I mean, I'm just mainly sharing my perspective. Know that Arthur has more to, to share with you. Unfortunately, he had to leave, so uh, we can we don't know what he has to share with us. But Sybil, I apologize for cutting you off. You know when you were about to say something on this topic. You know his job opportunity. Could you please um, you know just finish up with what you're about to say? It's not working. I don't need the It's not working anyway. So, Beer's just holding it, but we can't hear anything. Uh, Freddie, really? Freddie? Yeah. yeah, I just want to know. Uh, so where do we go from here? So we, no, we are all here gathered. We'll talk about it yeah, at the end. It's uh, you know, okay. so that, that's an opportunity to talk about what we're going to do from this point on with all the information that we have okay. presented. Uh, but anyway, Sybil, if you want to add something. Yeah, um, I, I, I am. And I did. I taught family life in third grade. Uh, but you, as we know that, you know, in third grade, uh, they didn't really learn about the sex, but they learned about, you know, your, your pot private parts 
and how children should be calling them by the proper names. Well, when you try to use the P word, for instance, in front of eight-year-olds, you know, they just fall off their chairs and laugh and they can't handle it. There was one part of FLE that I thought was appropriate, Family Life Education, not Fairfax, to statewide, uh, that I found was very good. They sent us photographs and the lessons were on good touches and bad where I think that every child needs to know, learn one thing, that no one should touch your body unless it's your mother or your father or a doctor. Mm -hmm. In any part of your body where a bathing suit covers. Mm -hmm. That was the only part of FLE program for third grade <laughs> that I approved of personally, and I did teach that. So we would show, diff, talk about different situations. Well, is that appropriate? Because children should know that um, your neighbor next door shouldn't be coming and playing with you in various ways, whether you're a little boy or a little girl, right? You should know that that's inappropriate. And if that happens, if someone touches you in a place that is covered by your bathing suit, you need to go tell your mother or your father they need to know. So I thought that was the most valuable thing in family life at the third grade level. Everything else is nonsense. Yes? I mean, I have a comment to make, and that's a good point. But I think, you know what, now that school board is taking on these kind of issues, I would prefer that parents take the FLE course, those things, what is appropriate Perfect. or not appropriate. It's for parents to teach their Amen. child at whatever age they feel it is appropriate, depending on the circumstances and the environment their child is growing up. Having this education in school just common for everybody, I think that's <coughs> something to be get rid of. That's I think fantastic it's just, they, idea. they have to mandate the parents at least one parent attend the course to talk to their child. One, of the, one last thing I want to say about it is that once they get, this is up to third grade from kindergarten to third, there's a little section, a little few lessons to teach. Once they get to fourth grade, that's uh, not done by the classroom teacher. It's brought in by a specialist teacher to teach uh, the FLE program from fourth through twelfth grade. So they're specialists and they do go into all the sexual things, and <laughs> sexual toys and positions and things that children don't have. It should, in my belief, they have no business. Sex has no business in school. School is where you learn to read, write, do arithmetic, do critical thinking. You know, none of us grew up with that. I didn't anyway. Uh, you learn by the partner you choose, right? That's how you learn sex education. You don't need to be taught. In high school, I think, um, but we were always taught about, you know, STDs and things like that. I think those are important. So they know, the, you know, the drug crisis, you know, I was taught uh, how um, horrible uh, opium was and things like that. You know, I, I never did drugs, you know. Most I did was drink too many beers and wine, but that's about it. So um, this, when you said and about and that's that, about it as far as, you know, primary level. It's gotten a lot worse from when I was teaching it, though. Remember, mm -hmm. I've been out since 19, 2003 is when I retired. When you, met, you mentioned, you know, the, the part that you were okay with, that was... The, the good touch, the, bad the, touch the, lessons. The parent was definitely the first person the child goes and talks about this, right? Right now, they're teaching in the school system, in the curriculum, that there are certain things about your sexuality that you may not be comfortable talking to your parents because they may not be okay with it. But that's okay. It's not your problem, it's their problem. You can come talk to us. Yeah. This is oh, that's new. That's, that's very dangerous. That's it's, dangerous. dangerous. It's, it's very dangerous. dangerous. How far is that? What grade level is that, Lindsay? I think it's in uh, seven. Seven grade. So they don't, they, they, they don't talk to your parents, day. come talk to us. Okay, yeah, that's really a dangerous thing. Oh, I didn't even know so about that. So <laughs> but anyway, I, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Um, anyone here is an educator, a teacher, involved in the school system? 
Oh, then. All right. So, um, so are, are you a teacher? No, I'm the admin assistant. Admin, okay. Yeah. But um, I know something also. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, I'm going to pose this question, and Sybil, uh, please answer. I know you retired back in 2003. Three, right? yeah, so I've so, been out of the uh, But, but still, I mean, this may be relevant. Um, you know, if, if it wasn't happened then, maybe it's still not happening now. So this is a question that I have. Um, things that I should focus on in terms of studying instead of this FLA jump, right? Um, so what about uh, citizenship, um, where, you know, the kids are taught I uh, did. More, wait, 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 wait. Moral values, duties and responsibilities to family, community, and this country. Assimilation. Uh, any of this were taught back when you were still teaching? No. Nobody taught this stuff. I did. That was my first little unit in September, was to talk about the, you know, how, what a great place America was. Now, why did I do this? I don't know. I, I didn't know about, you know, being liberal or... I just love this country. And I did a, a little unit on the symbols of, the, you know, of America and why it's such a great place. And they learned about the, you know, the flag, the pledge. And, and I did this every year at the very beginning of the school year. It was very simple. And they were like, well, why are you doing that? I said, because it's important. Ma'am, you Things said that like you're, that you're need to be taught. Yes, I, I appreciate that. So as an uh, administrator, uh, do you see this being taught in the school where? No, what, no, what, no, what, no, what are you doing? Nobody's teaching me. Oh, I'm working uh, at CPS okay. in one of the public school, elementary, as okay. the admin assistant. And uh, what she was talking about, actually, Recently, um, I was, you know, having a conversation with one of the kindergarten line A's that were talking about um, some parents actually all but opt out some of the lessons in um, FLE right. yeah, programs, right. but uh, we have counselors come over mm -hmm. to talk about the like family structures, which is not part of the FLE right. lesson, and uh, the parents was infuriated, you know, say, I opt out of the lesson and you are teaching this stuff. As, you know, counselor, they have a different subject. They go to the classrooms. And those <coughs> curriculums are not, teaching. exactly, those curriculums are not shared with the parents. And, uh, wow. and when the kids went home and then say, okay, you know, those uh, something we don't want the kids to learn yet at the kindergarten level. You know, but they are say all of love. We are talking about the different family structures. You know, you, which is some, something I feel. You know, parents, how are you gonna prevent that this kind of thing happen? And uh, you don't know. It's, you know, you don't know until your child. No, I mean, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Just like they fired the uh, high school teacher. Just fired the counselor. They can make a hard example. That's all. But so, the a counselor is talking about something yeah. parents don't agree with. Yes, that's right. We, we have, have a you know, yeah. fire as a counselor. Uh, and so those kids even care. third and fourth grade, and yeah. I, I sometimes I feel it's just too much that I think yeah. one of the parents, so you know, care for the office, they don't care for the parents, they don't care for the office, they don't care the trees in the yard. You know, the tree, natural tree has a hole, looks like a woman's proudly part, mm -hmm. okay. the kids is part came of over to, uh, to us and say, you need to do something about the tree. <laughs> uh, we were just oh, yeah. stunned. Wow. How are we going to do something? Yeah. But yeah. because yeah. the kids are talking about it, laughing about it, yeah. looking at it, what, where did they get right. this idea right. from? Right. Must be from the generation. Exactly. Um, from the generation. It's, exactly. it's all part of what Chris was talking the about. Name of education, of course. The dumbing down right. yes. of the importance of parents, of, of your education, of your country, etc., the assimilation of your country, right. and, and that sort of thing. That's all, that's all part of their whole process, is right. to dumb down all of that. So, and, I, and I see from that chaos. That's what they want. I mean, so you're, you're also high. chaotic thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, where's the, where's the foundation yeah, yeah. Right. right? So I'm going to move on. Um, but I just want to end with this. It sounds like the consensus is that Citizenship is not being taught in the schools, right? Doesn't sound like I that to me. Know. All right, I, I so that's it. an issue that we need to consider. Not teaching right. Unless they just started in the last 15 years. Well, they're not, teaching, right. they're not teaching So the next, so 
All right, so next, next topic is, is also very important, uh, vocational training um, for high school students. Um, Greg Nelson, uh, he's not here today. He's um, away on a trip. However, he has a message for us regarding this topic. Uh, Greg and his wife, I'd like to introduce him a bit, uh, have six adult children, seven grandchildren. They have lived in Fairfax County for over 20 years. He's a retired, he is retired from the United States Air Force. He worked in the Federal Law Enforcement Agency in a senior management position for a publicly traded company and owned his own, comp uh, owned his own business. In addition, he ran for state office in his spare time. Greg has made all his, these accomplishments without a four-year college education. Instead, he credits all of his accomplishments to his strong work ethic, common sense, outside-the-box thinking, and willingness to take on any opportunity. Greg feels that most of today's youth do not have these qualities. Since Greg is unable to uh, be here with us, um, my wife is going to uh, share with you his message, and, and I believe um, we have that printed out for her. Okay, so this is from Greg. And you know, uh, Greg Nelson was the candidate for the 86th district, um, the, uh, the House of Delegates. And he put up a valiant fight, but you know, we support him. But um, anyway, um, vocational training for America's youth. America has become slowly disconnected from the most fundamental elements of civilization, work itself. America has convinced itself that the best path for our kids is an expensive four-year degree. Trade schools, apprenticeship, and on-the-job training is labeled as an alternative for a vocational consolation prize. Many kids, like myself, were not interested in a college degree, but wanted to be self-sufficient and provide for themselves and not be distracted with huge debt. Can you hear me from in the back? Yes. Okay. Student loan debt is the second highest consumer debt in the United States. It is now $1.5 trillion. In the 1970s, I was fortunate to attend a high school that took an approach that not every kid wanted or needed to go to college. The high school allowed for two paths for, college, for students. College or a profession that they could go right into after graduation. The first two years were just like college. Every student had to take general education courses, English, history, math, civics, and physical education. In their junior year, they worked with a counselor to determine what kind of path they might want to take, college or work right after graduation. It should be noted that nothing was etched in stone, and a student at any time could change their path. Before we talk about the vocational opportunities and some ideas on how to pay for them, I want to also touch on some items that were required of all students. Courses they had to take before graduation. One was consumer math, which taught every student how to write a check. I think it's called personal finances now. Right? Uh, how to do your own taxes, how the banking system was set up, savings, credit cards, etc. Insurance, investing, and all the other things that we all need to know to provide for ourselves and our families. Civics was another course. Here's the talk about civics. Civics was another course that was required of every student. Understanding our constitution and how the laws of our land work. And the consequences if you don't follow our laws. There was also an emphasis on work ethics, personal responsibility, and the importance of having a positive attitude, which we were all taught to contribute to individual success. There are also many skilled trades that pay as much or more than can be obtained after completing a four-year degree. These trades allow for our young people to be immediate, productive members of our society usually paying taxes immediately with little to no debt to them, allowing them to embark on a full, happy, self-sufficient life. Many trades that could be offered at the high school level are as follows, but not limited to welding, plumbing, 
HVAC, Restaurant Management, Chef Culinary Arts, Cosmetology, Auto Repair, Computer Service, Electrician, Horticulture, and other trades important to the local areas. There is such a demand for people to work in the trades that I think you could go to trade unions and related companies to get them to help provide funding for vocational education. These are a few of my thoughts and would require further research and support from school boards and trade industries. Lisa and Greg Nelson. Right. So, uh, if we don't have any questions, um, of course, if you ask, she won't be able to answer the questions <laughs> anyway. So, we're going to move on to the next topic, which is AAP Magnet Schools issues. Um, this is very, very important. Um, <laughs> Uh, so the next speaker is going to be Vincent Palatingo. Uh, he's an engineer, an accomplished businessman, a businessman, and uh, a Fairfax County resident for over 21 years. As a FCPS parent, he has many concerns about our public school system. Therefore, he has formally announced his intention to run for an at-large school board position in this November general election. Yay. Vincent and my wife actually will be talking about issues related to uh, AAP and magnet schools. So, welcome, uh, Vincent. Okay, thank you for, for that uh, generous introduction. Uh, I'm standing here as a, a parent to talk about AAP, whereas uh, we have my co-panelist, who is uh, a, a parent who had success in getting their children to DJ. <laughs> And we have many here, many parents here who had their children went to TJ. So I may not be the best to talk about this issue, but from my research, this is what um, I have come to understand the main concerns the, the community has. The Asian American parents whose children dominate TJ, 68.5% Asian American students in TJ, they still think that there is some kind of a hidden quota system going on. That is why their children are not getting in. Okay, and uh, when I talk about my experience, I have seen uh, my kids bringing excellent scores in the written test and having great GPAs, still not getting in. Whereas their friends from other races got in with lesser scores, even if from the written test. So I was started thinking, you know, especially with the first child, I was thinking I wanted to get to know something more, how they do this selection. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, but it's completely a, a shielded area where you don't really get to know what exactly is going on. So I complained about this to some people recently after I announced my run for the thing. And then one person who was on uh, these issues for a very long time and who's working for the Fairfax County, she said, what are you talking about, Vincent? She's on my side. She's going to be vote for me. But she said, what are you talking about, Vincent? 68.5% population in TJ from a community that has only 20% population here. You're still not happy? You want more? <laughs> then this is what I said. No, see, the reason why I'm talking about this is because I thought you're going, you're going to have my same viewpoint when it comes to merit. I am not going by any racial preferences or anything. I believe in the American exceptionalism, American meritocracy. Mm -hmm. As far as I can assure that, that is being the primary reason why there is only 68.5% of Asian students. I am okay with that. But they are trying to change the demographics by adjusting the, the testing methods, which they tried multiple times, <laughs> like trying to reduce the the importance of test, increasing the importance of essays, and things like that they have done to bring in more minority children. And in spite of all their efforts, the so-called disadvantaged minority, African American children and Hispanic children, still less than 1%. So the adjustments based on race or income or whatever that they're trying to do, it's not working. So there is something else that fundamentally that is wrong. That is why the minority children are get, not getting in. I don't believe that uh, you know there are not enough children with merit. Maybe the families are not intact. Maybe there are other reasons. I don't know. So 
my question is this to the county school board system why don't we have a transparent system to prove that there is no racial quota in TJ admissions that no Asian kid is having a disadvantage over other kid when it comes to TJ admissions that's the first first uh, you know issue that that I wanted to bring up and maybe have an open discussion about it you know from parents who have been successful getting their children into TJ and this is talking about the TJ and when it comes to AAC, the Advanced Academic Programs, again, throughout the county, the majority of the beneficiaries are Asian, the 20% minority Asian children. See, the Asians are 19.6% of Fairfax County. That is including Chinese, Vietnamese, Korean, Filipinos, you know, Indians, everything combined. We are only 96.6%, but it is the highest minority group in Fairfax County. Uh, much larger than African Americans and Hispanic, uh, combining the, taking the entire county. But when it comes to the advanced academic programs, there is a significantly higher percentage of Asians in the advanced academic programs. And we are not really represented in the school board and their discussions from what I can see, because they're trying to dilute and they're trying to take more money out of these advanced academic programs because there is not really People are talking aggressively to keep it at the current levels. Mm -hmm. They play around with busing, and I mean, there are def definitely there are people, you know, who believes that these advanced academic programs are necessary to keep uh, smart children, advanced uh, academic capable children, challenged. Mm -hmm. Because when I have my friends uh, who talk about education system here, I have actually tried sending my son to India, thinking that you know uh, the education system here is not good enough. Uh, when he was in the second grade, mm -hmm. one year. So I have, when we discuss about, um, you know, American education system or Fairfax County system with, uh, with me, my friends, the Indian friends, this is what I tell them. If you can get them into the AAC program, the Advanced Academy program, then you're good. Then you don't worry. The system will keep them challenged. If that doesn't happen, then obviously you all can, as, uh, you know, parents who are taking serious interest in children's education, you can tell. They are not going to be challenged. And if children are not challenged, that's when they get into trouble. That's when they have free time, and that's when they, you know, uh, getting into, uh, you know, issues that we don't want them to be, especially when they are children, right? So, my focus, if I get on the school board, or even otherwise, is to keep the spending levels at the current levels, and not to cut on the funding for advanced education programs in Fairfax County. Mm. There are some... Uh, comments that we hear in general about the Asian American parents who are trying to help their children by extra push from outside, sending them to different uh, coaching programs and stuff like that. And I don't quite believe that is actually the right thing to do because the children has to be really advanced, capable level to get into the programs. But this is the diluting the testing mechanism or changing the emphasis from uh, science, technology or math to more writing is not the way to go about it. You can change the system, you can make the system more smarter so that the parents cannot really manipulate the system by additional training. I'm completely okay with that. But that is not by diluting uh, the, the, the science technology focus of the program at, at uh, Thomas Jefferson. One other idea that I have is from, you know, again, noticing from my community, the Asian American communities, um, the way they are taking the Fairfax County Advanced Academy programs. This is an observation that I made. Even if the kids are not interested in science or technology, they are exceptionally smart children. They may be good for English or humanities or other subjects, but they are not quite science technology children. But still, this is the only challenging program we have in Fairfax County <laughs> for really advanced type kids. Only science and technology program. So I am proposing to have another school